Shilton. Concorde 002 stands like a great bird in a massive cage at the British Aircraft Corporation's plant near Bristol. But never has there been such an expensive bird before, nor one which has been so reluctant to fly. But while the cost of the Anglo-French project keeps rising with almost predictable regularity, the reasons for keeping Concorde earthbound for so long are founded in the good sense of scientists and technologists. When she's ready to fly, she'll fly. Nothing must be left to chance. Concorde is unlike any other potentially commercial aircraft. Everything about her is new. And while extensive tests have and are being carried out on every aspect of the supersonic jetliner, to actually fly Concorde is the only ultimate proof that the aircraft really works. Before that day, everyone concerned with the project has to be satisfied that all humanly possible has been done to minimize chance and ensure success. Concorde is a complex piece of machinery. The delay in the Concorde project was not due to one single item, but a combination of factors, including stringent pre-flight testing. So said Mr. Anthony Wedgwood Ben, Minister of Technology recently. But while the delay is apparently unavoidable, it is still costing somewhere in the region of two million pounds a week in overheads, and has wiped out any hope of getting the aircraft into service before 1972. This date is crucial to everyone involved with the project, including the taxpayer for it would be up to the world's airlines to determine the plane's commercial attractiveness. Already, a start has had to be made on renegotiating the 74 options for Concorde. But even more basic is the threat of 700 redundancies among workers from the Rolls-Royce engine factory because of the year's delay in the flight program. It's a big problem, but what use are engines without aircraft in which to fit them? The huge Olympus engines will power Concorde to a maximum speed of 1,400 miles an hour at about 65,000 feet. Up to 132 passengers will be carried distances of up to 4,000 miles. Russia has a very similar plane already in the air. Mr. Wedgwood Ben has stated he is not worried by a Russian threat, as Soviet aircraft were not yet seeking to enter world markets. He added, in so many words, that anyway, Concorde was a far better aeroplane. On that day, not so far off, when Concorde does fly, science will take second place to a lot of crossed fingers that will be willing it to a deserved success.